My next guest directed a film called Halloween that became the most successful independent production in motion picture history. His latest film, about to open, is called The Thing. Please welcome John Carpenter. Hello, John. How are you? Hi. Have a seat, if you will, sir. You know, uh, uh, civilians all the time hear claims about motion pictures that made more money, did uh, more money in one weekend, did more money in a half an hour. But this one, the most successful independent production in history. Give us an idea what that means. The movie cost $300,000 to make, and it made $70 million. <laughs> 300000 to make. Yeah. You can pretty much do that in your basement. 300000 yeah, is a pretty cheap, much, yeah. cheap film, cheap movie, right? Cheap movie. And $70 million? Worldwide to date, yeah. Good heavens. Now, do you get a lot of that? No, not a lot of it. No, a little bit of it. Yeah. Uh, you, you prefer doing an independent film, I would guess, huh? Well, I just started making uh, films with big studios, with Universal, and I kind of like it. It's fun. Yeah, are they treating you well? Because Very well. I read the, that you mentioned that the, sometimes a motion picture company, or a big one, would be kind of not the most fun to work with. I was worried when I went in because I thought maybe they'd take away control of the movie from me. I think that's what every director wants, yeah. is control of his film. They were wonderful. And uh, so far, things are going oh, well. Oh, real well. Now, now, the thing, which we're going to see some uh, footage of, this is uh, pretty bizarre stuff here. Pretty strange. Now, is this... Uh, it's different from Halloween and Halloween too, huh? Yes. Uh, the thing is about... Uh, actually about a monster from outer space. Uh -huh. And um, we tried to make the king of the monster movies. And... Um, Rob Bottin did the uh, special effects, and I think you're going to see a scene from that. And, All right. Uh, it'll be self-explanatory. This is pretty scary, huh? Yeah, I guess All right. so. And uh, it's called The Thing, and we'll see a minute and a few seconds of that. Watch the monitors here. So then it's the story of a boy and his dog. Right? Right. <laughs> my, my, now that, uh, wow. Now, uh, first of all, you could hear the audience kind of ooing and aahing. You, you kind of, you know a film is good by the way, the noises the audience makes, don't Pretty you? much. In this kind of film, if the audience is uh, ooing and aahing, I know I'm all right. Mm -hmm. Do you, when you make, uh, for instance, when this film was completed, did you just put it in theaters or do you screen it and test the reaction of the audience? Part of making a film for me is uh, when I finish my first cut, I show it to an audience and see their reaction. I'll go back and change it and then show it again. Mm -hmm. and, and the audience is a big part of the film. What is the reaction you're after in, in this particular film? Well, it's much the same as getting on a roller coaster. Uh, there's a big build-up to the first uh, time you go over the edge, and mm -hmm. when you do, there's no stopping it. Yeah. Now, I noticed uh, uh, Paul looked away and people were gasping. That's a favorable response as far as you're concerned? <laughs> Honestly, in this kind of film, you're dealing with something that the whole audience knows isn't real at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that there's no such thing as a monster from outer space. At least we haven't seen one in mm -hmm. the paper. And um, <laughs> I want the audience to believe it. Yeah. When they see that, they say, oh, my, 
my lord, look at that. That's yeah. real. Yeah. Now, uh, do you have children? No. Now, assume you did, maybe an eight-year-old child. Would you send your eight-year-old child to see this film? I would evaluate my eight-year-old, uh -huh. and I would, I would ask myself, is, is the eight-year-old impressionable? And could they realize this is a fantasy film? It's really not very harmful, but it's frightening. Yeah. And if I thought so, sure. 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 Hmm. If I was an eight-year-old kid, I'd want to see this movie immediately. Oh, yeah, I would no imagine... No matter what my parents said, yeah. I'd go right out and see it. I would imagine kids will be lining up around the equator to see this one. Right? <laughs> um, this is now... How do you do that stuff when you saw the, uh, all of those uh, gruesome things? What exactly were we looking at? Was, was it animation? Was it... Uh... That's mechanical special effects makeup. And basically, those are objects that are built and operated like puppets with hydraulics and uh, people's hands moving things like this mm -hmm. and uh, all done on camera. Yeah, and so what, what we were looking at actually did take place. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you, now, is it we had a gentleman on, uh, John Dykstra, a couple uh -huh. of weeks ago, and yes. he said that the, the problem with doing special effects of any kind is once you've done them in a film, people get to be blasé about them. That's right. So you have to keep topping yourself. Is this the first time ever for some of these effects? I think so. I don't think you'll ever see effects like this in a movie. I, don't, I know there hasn't been a monster movie like this, mm -hmm. where the monster constantly changes form. Uh, it never looks like any one thing. It's constantly in motion. And um, it's pretty hard to pull off, but I think we've done all right. Uh, you worked with Kurt Russell in this film. You worked That's with him right. before. And this is a, he's had a, an interesting career uh, going from, I guess he was with the Disney organization as a kid or a, a younger person than he is now. He did a lot of Disney films in the 60s, and um, I met him on Elvis. We did a TV movie, mm -hmm. and he played Elvis Presley, and he walked in, and he didn't look like Elvis Presley. I thought, well, if this guy can do it, hell, I can do it too. <laughs> and um, we worked together on Escape from New York and finally The Thing, and I think he's a, a brilliant actor, mm -hmm. and he's also a real close friend. Yeah. Uh, people talk about you and compare you to Hitchcock. Is that a legitimate comparison in, in your uh, Well, I'm very flattered by that. I, I really am, I think, more influenced by a director, uh, Howard Hawks. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He did, uh, he did the first version of The Thing from Another World. Um, and I admire his work a lot. Now, The Thing itself, what are we talking about here? Um, what, it, what exactly is The Thing? Well, The Thing is an alien organism that um, has been buried in the ice in Antarctica for 100,000 years. And what it does is imitate other life forms perfectly. So that, for instance, in the audience here, um, the problem might be that several of them, or all of them, could be the mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that feeling occasionally. But, uh, we're, what are we doing? We're pausing here. I guess we'll come back unless something catastrophic takes place here in the studio. We'll be right back. Uh, Mr. John Carpenter, thank you very much. Thank Good you. luck to you on the thing. I have a hunch it will do quite well. Uh, also, my thanks to Hank Williams Jr. and Elaine Boozler, our announcer, Mr. Bill Wendell, Paul Schaefer and the band, ladies and gentlemen, you, the studio audience. Tomorrow night, Alan Ginsberg will be here. Sports specials producer Bud Greenspan will have viewer mail, plus the bird lady of Queens, Arlene Thomas, and do's and don'ts with Frank and Fred. Good night. Good night.